Kale, Doron, Kantu, Ibush. Hex on and greetings to all those who know and understand. My name is Dr. Kangalini Zuluma, and I'm about to speak out in a manner in which I've never done so before. And why? Because it's time and it's definitely necessary. Let's have a conversation. And the conversation with Within this conversation, I'm going to bring up some things and hope provoking many of you to take out the time to think. I want each and every one of you, and who I am addressing is the melanated people. I am addressing the African American community and race. I am addressing all of those organizations and churches and cliques and circles and temples and organizations and movements that your actions are bringing about division within the African American community and race. Excuse me. Today I'm going to speak to condition. I'm not, I'm not going to be pointing too much blame until after this video. But today we're going to talk about condition. And in order to talk about condition, Everyone watching this video needs to be clear in the understanding that every intricate aspect and detail of life stops, starts, ends, and begins with you. Let's look at your parents. America is the most mentally, physically, spiritually, sexually, and financially dysfunctional society on the planet. If you are born of parents that were not clear of that fact when you were pushed out and given birth to, you found yourself growing up in a society, this society, the American society, making attempts to adjust and adapt. And those of you ha who have successfully adjusted and adapted have become dysfunctional in a mental, physical, spiritual, sexual, and financial way. This country, the way it's set up, the way it's designed, gives many not only us, many handicaps, many bad habits. Now, if you sit back and look at African-American men and women, African-American men have never been able to just be men. And the women, African-American women, have never been able to just be women. We were brought here, our ancestors were brought here as slaves. Was, you know, our ancestors were illegally abducted shackled, enslaved, and forcefully brought to the shores of this country, made into slaves, enslaved. And since our ancestors were brought here, right on into the, the evolutionary transition of present day, have been, have been oppressed and persecuted. Now, Many of African American people born here in this country, if not all, suffer from post-traumatic slave syndrome, Willie Lynch complex, religious indoctrination on some level or another, and you don't even know it. You live here in the good old U.S. of A., and many of you are involved in things in which you don't even know what you're involved in or why you're involved in it. Black people are so accustomed to losing in this country, we don't even know how to win. And it's funny because I used to hear that, you know, the world favors the scumbag. Now, what I mean by that is I know many elders who have a lot of information, a wealth of information, so eager, so passionate to teach. But these particular elders, they have a they have a decent following, like myself. I have an online following on a on a national and international level of a little over sixty-seven thousand. I've come in contact with some groups and some organizations that have shown me how to expand myself on different search engines, you know. There's all different internets. The internet you play on, you think is the whole internet. It's not. The internet is a very big piece of pie. It has many slices that appeal to many different cultures. Certain aspects of the internet are very culturally diverse, and certain aspects of the internet is very segregated. 
So I've worked very hard over the years to formulate an up close and personal relationship with the Indian, Asian, Caucasian, Latino, Hispanic, West Indian, and African communities. But out of this 67,000 following, only 1% is African American. And those who so choose to comment on that fact say it's because African American people don't read. I just recently received a major book deal beginning of last year. So I've now been receiving the different national, international demographic reports. And oh and behold, they have us, African Americans, as the lowest demographic of reader on the planet. So my the college students, the young brothers and sisters that I deal with on a consistent and constant basis, have suggested that I make videos. Haven't really been one of too much about the videos. I'll drop one here, there, because there's a lot of discord, a lot of nonsense, a lot of slander and disrespect within our race. We don't even know how to even deal with one another privately. You know, we call ourselves wanting to out each other or whatever. You know, like who's not flawless living in this country? If you live in the United States of America, you are definitely flawed. I'm saying because none of us are perfect. And one of the things that I have embraced and have looked have looked forward to is making mistakes. Because when you make mistakes, you get an up close and personal understanding of what not to do. You get an up close and personal understanding of how things really work. Like when it comes like this video. I wouldn't be making this video if I didn't love black people. First law of nature, self-preservation. Preservation of one's offspring and one's race. Well, I have children and I have made promises to those children that their father is going to exercise the very best of his abilities to leave them the best world possible. But I'm disturbed in my spirit at what I am seeing online. We sit back and look at all these different media outlets pumping all of this negative African-American nonsense, all this niggaism. It used to be a time in which we had to worry about seeing, you know, the, the different European media, you know, the, you know the, 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 the white media here in America portraying us African-American people in a negative light. But now <laughs> you have media outlets out there owned by African-Americans that is streaming this hob garbage 24-7, 365 to the world. And due to the fact that a lot of these videos are private videos, people just walking around the street, just filming all kinds of nonsense, you got those outside of the borders of America that's now looking at it, well, it's not the American media no longer showing and betraying what they want to show and portray pertaining to black people. But now you got black people all over America whipping out their cameras, you know what I'm saying, filming, all kind of, recording all kinds of nonsense. Don't get it twisted. We are living in some very troublesome times. Ethnic cleansing is definitely in full effect. An African American male in this country, they say dies every 28 hours. Violently. Look at how many African American men are in prison. And now because of the internet, everybody got something to say. I work in the medical field. I see tons of people come in the hospital. You can imagine how many young White boys is running around with only one testicle because they want to do something on video that's going to make them go viral. What is going on? Who are you? What do you stand for? What do you represent? Where do you come from? You need to be able to answer those questions. And you know the times have gotten bad when Crips and Bloods can unite. We got churches on every corner throughout the nation. I've investigated many churches and grassroots organizations. And what I've discovered is a bunch of individuals self-exalting themselves under the umbrella of 501c3 nonprofit organizations. And many individuals flocking and catering to the effect of stroking these individuals' egos. Why? Who are you following? And why? Because once again, everything stops, starts, ends, and begins with you. In how you 
deal with the world around you and the people in it. Not how the world around you and the people in it deal with you. But some of you feel that because you <laughs> dressing like Jay Z, dressing like Beyonce, or driving like Jay Z, that the world's supposed to treat you special. Well, the world don't treat Beyonce and Jay Z special due to the fact that how Jay drives or what Beyonce Beyonce wears. It's the contributions they have made to music and entertainment that has gotten them their recognition. And they say, I say, the magnificence, the greatness of one. Is manifested through the many. So it wouldn't matter who Jay-Z or Beyonce were or, or are if it wasn't for you. It is you who make Jay-Z who Jay-Z is. It is you who make Beyonce who Beyonce is. Because black people do matter. How do I know that black people matter? We make we create many millionaires and billionaires. Look at hair weave alone and all the accessories that go with it. Look at how many industries we have created. Look at the entertainment industry. You imagine if every solitary African-American sports figure, entertainer, and celebrity came together and pulled their resources, we would be a mega body entity on this planet. We would truly be the giants that we are. But yet there is so much division. Don't even understand how the many don't even understand how their brains work, how their thought processes work, primary and secondary, consciousness and their subconsciousness. Because in the cool, calm, collected, laid back and reserved posture and position of what black is, we celebrate it. Black power. But yet when we get angry, then the true definition of what black is unfolds. That's what makes it very easy for one black to blow another black's head off or act out violently against another black because of the definition of what black is. Even though we have so chosen to use the term black as a people, black is a color that primarily has been defined negatively. Like I don't call white people white people. To call a white per to call a Caucasian white, you're calling them God. Because if you look up the definition of what white is, it does not in any way, shape, size, or form describe or depict a human being that is flawed. There are many things that play on our psyche. I talk to black women on a regular basis who tell me to their my face that they don't need a black man. They want a black man. The last time I checked, the divine creator does not create wants. The creator creates needs. To be able to operate in the true dynamic in which man and woman have been created, one must operate in duality. You will never have any uni unity within a race if you don't have duality within a race. A lot of black women love them some black men, but yet don't respect them. Role reversal all around you. And due to the fact that America is just some kind of experiment, there's no real foundation and structure to America. America is like a blue screen. You can basically create anything that you want to create. So that's how they keep you amazed and dazed and distracted. Keep changing your scenery. And there's nothing for you to look over your shoulder and there's no blueprint. There's no standing agenda that you can look back and say, okay, I'm sliding off my square. I need to recalibrate. It's not there. So you find yourself chasing everything that's dangled in front of you. And see, one of the things that's really funny is, is this. This system that's in place, puts about a thousand hooks in your ass. Excuse my French. So while you're wrestling to remove these hooks, which I call bad habits and mental, physical, spiritual, sexual, and financial handicaps, what one does not take into consideration, it only needs one hook to keep you under control. Just like fishing. 
I don't need a thousand hooks in a fish to get it in the boat. I don't need a thousand hooks in a fish to get it on land. All I need is one hook to control the fish. That being said, even when I'm counseling with individuals or I'm at community meetings, there can be 25 things discussed, but all it takes is one thing that somebody doesn't agree with to take them to the left. And it's 2016, black people. Who persecutes black people more than black people? Now, I know I'm going to catch some flack behind that. What, or was you supposed to say, oh, we can do that? Now we smack dead in the middle of ethnic cleansing. When you have black men being shot down and killed, murdered in the street, with people on looking, videotaping and watching, and those who have pulled the trigger are not being prosecuted, not losing their jobs, not going to jail, that means someone has given an executive order. And y'all should know who that is. Many of you, I guess, thought things was going to get better because we have what is cl close to what I guess we will ever have as a black president. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't see things as better. I see things as worse. All of this nonsense is by design. But we are so good at doing all of the, we are good at our bad habits. We are good at our mental, physical, spiritual, sexual, and financial handicaps. A lot of y'all love the handi your handicaps. A lot of you love your bad habits. So those are those hooks. How can I get you to stop eating Twinkies and haagen dodge Because that kind of crap is going to destroy your health when you love cookies and haagen dodge There are mega issues going on right now. And if you're a part of any church, if you're a part of any organization, any group, any clique, circles, that's not making it their business to dot I's, cross T's, and connect dots on you and helping you to grow and, and evolve to help to um, empower you mentally, physically, spiritually, sexually, and financially, they ain't doing nothing. And I tell them to their face. Everybody wants to be us, but we want to be everything. We want to be everybody else. The different parades come around. You know, I, I know African Americans that every parade come around. Oh, you, you West Indian at this parade. Oh, you African American at this parade. Oh, you, you this at this parade. You that at that parade. Some of y'all even down there dancing in the gay parade. Or in attendance. How many of you are really paying attention to what is taking place? I used to invest a lot of time in African American adults. Used to be 80% adults, 20% children. Now I'm 80% children, 20% adults. Because who has time to be doing all this brain, brain banging? Even within the so-called conscious community. What type of consciousness is taking place within this community? A lot of arguing, fussing, fighting, debating, hollering, screaming, spitting on each other. Disrespect. And a lot of y'all arguing facts. And issues or arguing things that have no relevance in 2016. Yeah, knowledge yourself is very important. A lot of those who are so-called lecturers, so-called conscious community, you ain't even taking into consideration your audience, your African American audience, your average African American brother and sister has a comprehension level and a reading grade point level. Of a seventh grader. So who are you talking to? And the people listening are too proudful to even come out and let you know they don't even understand what you're talking about. We are in a state of 911, triple 911. But you got these different cliques, <laughs> you got these different individuals out here calling them subconscious leaders, master teachers. They ain't doing nothing but chasing their tail. And you right there, just like a confused dog, watching them chase their tail. I know more. I know many of them. I've come across, I've got a lot of friends that's in a lot of things. Moors, Nuwabians, Israelites, the Kemetics, the Christians, the Muslims, you know what I'm saying, Israelites. I mean, you name them. 
But it's kind of funny to me that um, none of this stuff has any immediate historical reference to your existence as it pertains to your ancestry. The overwhelming majority of the slaves that came to this country as slaves came from West Africa. They say 87 to 93%. But yet you got those individuals who have, one, grew up as Christians, then came on, stumbled onto, or stumbled across some Egyptology, you know what I'm saying, and then now you're a fan. Now it's comedic this and comedic that. Well, don't get it twisted. I don't put nothing before my ancestry. My life has the foundation and structure of my ancestry by way of DNA. Now, I already knew what my ancestry was prior. So due that I had knowledge and full understanding of what my ancestry was prior, I turned around and I put that up against one of these African ancestry DNA tests to see if these tests were accurate, if they was telling the truth or not. And they are. But you got many of y'all who will sit up here and say, oh, I'm, I don't trust those DNA tests. But yet, a lot of my comedic brothers and sisters, what's going on? This is not personal. Only thing that's personal about this is your, your, your what is it? Your, your, your fixation, your infinity for Kemet, Egypt, has taken you off your square. Because if you did an African ancestry DNA, te DNA test today and it came up Ebo, that's Nigeria. There's an Igbo reception over there waiting for you. You got many Igbo Nigerians here in the United States. If you did the African ancestry test and it came back Yoruba, there's a Yoruba reception over there. Benin, Ghana. But yet you way over there in Kemet. You over there in the Nile. And let's ask yourself, when our ancestors were illegally abducted, shackled, enslaved, and forcibly brought to the shores of this country, peep this. Every pyramided society on the planet was already in ruin. And let's take it a couple steps further. Who got to Egypt first? Because my research tells me that Europeans hit that spot and loot, robbed, pillaged, and stole and looted the hell out of Kemet. My research tells me also that the overwhelming majority of the books that ever been published on Egypt, Kemet, the Nile Valley, so on and so forth, were by Europeans. Since when they going to be forthcoming with any truth? Let's take it a couple kicks even further. Running around trying to perpetuate this whole concept of being Egyptian. Not even being clear in your understanding that because you are a, become a fan, that you have blinded yourself to a lot of facts like the ones that I'm sharing. One, let's talk about the Kemetic Egyptian people of that time. Them being Egyptian, directly connected to its ancestry, directly connected to the lands, the land and the secrets and the mysteries, were unable to sustain themselves to present day. So no disrespect, because me as a truth seeker, I study many different genres, but I put nothing before my own ancestry. That's sacrilege. So where me, myself, as a priest, a diviner, and a healer, I follow truth where I find it. But primarily, primarily, that goes back to that mind state again. Primarily, my foundation and structure is my ancestral. I put nothing before my own ancestry. And some of you, a lot of you, are so in, got your head so deeply engirthed in so many things that have absolutely nothing to do with the atrocities that's been committed here in the United States, past or present. Because we are a very unique race, us African Americans. What makes us unique is that the fact that we're supposed to take out the time to dot I's, cross T's, and connect dots on acquiring present day, I'm saying, and ancient information. It's almost like being bilingual or being street smart and book smart. Living in a Europeanized, capitalistic, white male supremacist society, we're supposed to be clear in our understanding of how this country operates. But the many of you running around here tripping on ego, which to be perfectly honest, let's keep it 100. You scared to death. You scared. Because if you wasn't scared, you would really step the hell up and really do something that really matters. 
A lot of you nothing but a bunch of sheep. Caught up in whatever it is that you caught up in. Buying time until it's time for you to go to the slaughterhouse. Because it's one of them type of situations. If something is positive, then it manifests itself positively. You don't really want to deal with the true essence of what is spiritual. That's spookism. Because you're too busy acting out your king and queen fantasy. Or because, wow, check this. Memorization is not education. So because you go out here and watch a bunch of YouTube videos, or read a bunch of books, and put a lot of that information to memory, don't mean shit. Because at the end of the day, life is not predicated on what you think, feel, believe, or have faith in. At the end of the day, life is predicated on what you know. What you can do. What you can manifest. You can't do what you don't know. So when it comes down to the true secrets and mysteries, when you really sit back and look at the information that's really needed to empower a people, it ain't going to be found in no video. It's not going to be found in no book. That's taboo. Just like the fact you run around here naming yourself after the gods of ancient Kemet. That right there is a red flag. Because anyone who has taken out the time to do any real study and research, like myself, I'm initiated to 16 out of 36 African indigenous spiritual systems and four shamanistic. And one of the things I'm very clear on is one, the names that have been given to these different sets and systems are for the purpose of identification, not division or separation. My African American people, yes. I would rather you reading up on commit than killing one another. Reading up on commit versus committing crime, stealing, raping, or pillaging. But what one needs to take into full understanding is you are a living, breathing testament. From you all the way back to your very first ancestor, you are a living, breathing representation of that. See, one of the things I tell people all the time, cliches ain't wisdom. Because again, it's some of what I call that paratizing, a bunch of parrots. Oh, we stand on the shoulders of those who come before us. Yes, but you are but are you ancestor? Are you inheritors of ancestral knowledge and the perpetuators of their ways in these modern days? So many run around here spiritual window shopping. Oh, this don't resonate with me, that don't resonate with me, this resonates with me. Of course Egypt re resonates with you. African Americans are a bunch of glitter boys and glitter girls. You don't know a, a broke African American when you see one. We wear the best of everything. So of course you don't want to be the Igbo or the Nigerian. Oh no, you want gold around your head and your neck, and you know what I'm saying. You want to be a a, 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 a a god. Stop calling yourself gods because if you truly were God, you'd be perfect and powerful. In in, in your in your in your perfectness. And your power would be manifesting right now. At a snap of your finger, you would be able to turn the tables on those individuals who are persecuting us. God? And if you were really smart and you was really doing your research, that's what got the ancient Egyptians in trouble in the first place. Yes, let's talk about why every pyramid culture on the planet is in ruin. Because the first sacrifices that were ever that was ever made, that was ever created, was human sacrifices. But the pyramid societies decided to. We don't no longer because of the fact they were connected, directly connected to the land, directly connected to the ancestry and the secrets and the mysteries. The the, the knowledge that they had was magical. They were truly supernatural. But what they forgot was the fact that it was their up close and personal relationships with the deities and different entities in the spirit world that gave them their power. So they decided to say, hey, we don't want to work with gods and spirits and entities and deities. We want to become gods ourselves. So when human sacrifice was abolished, they decided to continue to sacrifice humans on their own behalf. Which is still taking place to today. Secret societies run the world. You have negative and positive secret societies. But those of us, so many of us who live here in America, you ain't clear on your understanding of what your positive and your negative influence.